Hey guys, it's Ms. Johnson and I'm here to bring you our fourth video for note, for Unit 3. We're on Unit 3, Notes 4, which is Dividing Monomials. So we are continuing our operations with monomials and picking up with dividing. So with dividing monomials, we have a property, just like we had with multiplying, and it's called the Quotient of Powers property. And the Quotient of Powers property says this, we subtract the exponents when we divide powers. So when we divide powers, we subtract exponents. So for example, if I have something like a to the sixth over a to the third, I would do a to the six minus three, which is a to the third. Another way of thinking of this is saying I have six a's multiplied together on top, one, two, three, four, five, six, and three a's multiplied together on the bottom. And when I have Anything divided by itself, it is 1. So a divided by a is 1, it cancels out. a divided by a is 1, cancels out. a divided by a is 1, cancels out. I'm left with a times a times a, which is a to the third. Okay. So when I divide powers, I subtract their exponents. Let's take a look at number 1. So I have 4 times a times b on the top divided by a on the bottom. So anything that's on top and bottom can cancel out. It's like having a over a is the same thing as 1. When I cancel everything on the bottom, that's all that's left is a 1. So this would look like 4 times b over 1, but we all know that writing division of 1 doesn't mean anything. It doesn't change our answer. So it would just be 4 times b. In number 2, I have 6 times x times y to the third on the top over x times y on the bottom. Now x over x is going to cancel out, so that goes away. The y's, y to the third over y to the first, I have 3 minus 1, which leaves me with 2 left over on the top. So I subtracted their powers to leave me with 2 left over. So I have 6y squared over 1, which again is just 6y squared. In number 3, I have 5 times x squared times y over 10x. So now I have a fraction that can be reduced. 5 over 10 is the same thing as 1 half. So I'm going to reduce that fraction just as if it were standing alone by itself over here. That's the same thing as 1 half. So that's what I have as the fraction now. Then I have x squared over x. One of my x's is going to go away from the top and the bottom. 2 minus 1 leaves me with 1 on the top. So And the y has nothing on the bottom to cancel with. So I'm left with 1xy on the top over 2 on the bottom, which is the same thing as just x times y over 2. We don't need to write that 1 in front. Um, in number 4, I can reduce 4 fourteenths. That's going to be 2 over 7. And then 3 a's on top and 4 on the bottom. Now, 4 minus 3 is 1. But since the, I started with more on the bottom, that's where my 1 left over is going to be. So really, it's like I'm canceling the 3 on the top and leaving 1 left over on the bottom. Then I have 5 b's on top and 2 on the bottom, so these 2 are going to go away, and 5 minus 2 is 3. So my 2 is the coefficient out front, then I have b to the third, that's the numerator. Um, in the denominator, I have 7 as the coefficient out front, and then a left over. And that is my simplified quotient. So then let's just talk about some properties of simplified monomials because we've put a lot of rules into place now and we need to make sure that we are checking that we've simplified the whole way. Um, one thing that we need to make sure of is that each base appears only once, exactly once. So I should see each a only one time, each x only one time, and all of that. Um, I should also see no power of powers, or in other words, no parentheses. Okay, that means I should have taken care of my parentheses. If you can, you can put a little red circle around that. No parentheses, take care of those. Um, and then the last one is that all fractions are in simplest form. Those are like the coefficients out front. All fractions have to be in simplest form. So let's take a look at the back. So now we're going to put a bunch of these rules together. So in number 5, I have 5 over 15 times on the top, 5 times x to the third, y to the fourth, bottom, 15 times x squared times y. So the 5 over 15, that can reduce down to 1 third. The x to the third over x squared, I have 3x's on top, 2 on the bottom, 3 minus 2 is 1. 
there's more on top, so I'm going to have the one left over up on the top. Then the y's, I have y to the fourth on top over y to the first on the bottom. 4 minus 1 is 3. So I'm going to have 3 left over, and since I started with more on the top, that means the 3 go up there. So now on the top I have x times y to the third over 3. That's all that I have on the bottom, and that's it. My fraction is reduced. I see an x only one time. I see a y only one time. I see no parentheses, so I'm good. Let's talk about number 6. I have 27 over 54, and then I have x squared over x squared. Now, 27 over 54, 27 is half of 54, so that's like saying 1 over 2, or 1 half. And then x squared over x squared, 2x is on top, 2x is on the bottom. They're both going to cancel in both places. So those go away, and I'm left with just 1 half. That's it. In number seven, I have x times x to the third on the top. Now, this brings us to a good point. I need to make sure that I simplify the top separately from the bottom before I go across the fraction bar. I need to make sure that my numerator is all simplified and my denominator is all simplified before I can go start going across. So on the top, I have x to the first times x to the third. That's going to give me x to the fourth. On the bottom, x to the fourth, there's nothing else I can do with that. But then x to the fourth divided by x to the fourth, 4 minus 4 is 0. So that leaves me with x to the 0, which we all know is equal to 1. I almost wrote an x there. It's not x, it's 1. Okay, it's also kind of like saying anything divided by itself is 1. Well, x to the fourth is the same thing as x to the fourth, so x to the fourth divided by x to the fourth is going to be 1. Let's try number 8. Now, number 8 combines a couple things and takes us back to that power of powers rule. What happens in number 8 is that I'm going to end up with, there's a couple ways of thinking of this, and we saw these back in, I think, notes 2 or 3. Um, I have 2 to the 4th power. Then I have p to the 2nd to the 4th, and those get multiplied. So 2 times 4 gives me 8, so that's p to the 8th power. And then in the bottom, I have 3 to the 4th power. I type 2 to the 4th into my calculator and get 16. p to the 8th is just p to the 8th. And I type 3 to the 4th in my calculator and get 81. I can't reduce 16 over 81, and there's only a p, so I only see it one time, so I'm good. All right, in number 9, now when I look inside those parentheses, I recognize that there's an x on top and an x on the bottom. The 5, 6, I can't do anything with, so I'm going to leave that alone. But x to the 5th over x, I can reduce that. I can simplify there. So I'm going to get rid of this 1x that's in the bottom, which leaves me with 4 left in the top. Then the y, there's nothing in the bottom to cancel with, so that's it. So Let's just rewrite this and see what we have. We haven't done the parentheses yet, so I have to leave those. 5x to the 4th y over 6, all raised to the second power. So everything inside here gets raised to the second power. That means I have 5 to the second. x to the 4th to the second, 4 times 2 is 8. So that's x to the 8th. And then y to the, to the first to the second, 1 times 2 is 2, so y to the second and the bottom, 6 to the second. So then typing 5 squared into my calculator, or most of us just know that off the top of our head, 5 squared is 25, x to the eighth, y squared, and on the bottom, 6 squared is 36. I can't reduce 25 over 36. I see x one time, y one time, so I'm good. And then in number 10, I have um, all that stuff on the inside raised to the third power. Again, I'm going to simplify the inside first. If that's a note that you need to make, to make right here for both numbers 9 and 10, simplify the inside first. The less you have to raise to that third power, the easier, the better off you are. So simplify the inside first. Okay, so what I recognize on the inside is that I have a to the fifth over a, so that's going to leave me with four a's up on the top. Then I have b to the eighth over b to the third, eight minus three is five, I have more on the top, so these go away, and I have b to the fifth on the top. So let's rewrite that and see what it looks like. That looks like a to the fourth, b to the fifth, 
all over 2 raised to the third power. Now I need to actually do the power. So a to the fourth to the third, 4 times 3 is 12. So that's a to the 12th. Then b to the fifth to the, to the third, 5 times 3 is 15. So b to the 15th. And then 2 to the third, when I type that into my calculator, I get 8. So a to the 12th, b to the 15th, and 2 to the third is 8. All right, one last question, a word problem here that we're going to look at. Um, you're going to want to go ahead and draw this picture on your notes. It's not actually on there. So um, go ahead and make that square with the circle turned inside. Um, that's the exact same width as the square. And then your radius here is T. So then let's look at that question. It says write the ratio of the area of the circle to the area of the square in simplest form. So ratio means I'm going to be dividing. Area of the circle, that's pi r squared, to area of the square, that's length times width, in simplest form. So what I'm looking for here is pi r squared divided by length times width. Well, now let's look at what our radius actually is. Our radius is actually t. Okay, so then what that means is on the top, I have pi times t squared. On the bottom, the length of my square, since my circle is exactly inside my square, and the radius is half the circle, that means this half of the circle is also t. So that means my length is 2 times t. So length is 2 times t, but I also know the width is 2 times t width is 2 times t as well. So on the bottom, I have 2t times 2t. Okay, so let's look at what that does. Now I have pi times t squared on the top. I can't do anything with that yet. On the bottom, I have 2t times 2t. This is the same thing as 4t squared. And then when I reduce that ratio, t squared over t squared goes away, and I'm left with just pi over 4. So that is the ratio of the area of the square to the area of the circle, given that the circle is inscribed inside the square. So that's just a little geometry lesson for you. Um, that's going to take us to the end of our notes video for today. It's a short one, so that's kind of nice. Um, don't forget to check your note sheet off with Ms. Johnson and pick up your practice, and I will see you later. Thanks for listening.